Hey there! Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled PowerShell v3 Remoting in Windows Server 2012. My name is Tim Warner. Windows PowerShell Remoting refers to executing PowerShell commandlets or entire PowerShell scripts on, you guessed it, a remote box. In this micro nugget, we're constraining ourselves to Windows Server 2012, which has incredible out-of-the-box support for Windows Remote Management as well as PowerShell remoting. On my test nugget here, this is a member server named HVNugget3, we can open up the Server Manager console and verify that yes, WinRM or Windows Remote Management is enabled out of the box. We'll open up an administrative PowerShell session. How I recommend you do that is right-clicking the icon on the taskbar and selecting Run as Administrator from the Tasks Jump List. The client-side component of WinRM is called WinRS. You can get syntax help by using the forward slash question mark, and these examples are particularly useful. Thus, we can open up a remote command shell or PowerShell command prompt on any remote machine by using this syntax, winrs r colon, the machine name, and then what command you want to execute remotely. If we want to start a cmd.exe session, we can just use cmd. Now, if I use hostname, you can see that I am, in fact, connected remotely to hvnugget1 instead of the local box. I can exit, up arrow, and change cmd to PowerShell if I want to have a remote PowerShell session. So that's one way. Once we've done that, we can execute commands directly on that box by using PowerShell commandlets. Let me clear the screen, and now let me show you the invoke command commandlet. We can get help for that commandlet by running get help and then invoke command. I'm typing a little bit of the commandlet and using tab completion. Sometimes tab completion will give you an unexpected option or commandlet. Just go back, backspace, and type a couple more characters. I'm not going to download help, so I'll answer no to the update help request, and we can see some basic syntax. There's quite a bit to invoke command, as you can see. However, what we're going to do is work very simply here. Let me clear the screen, invoke command. Again, tab completion sometimes doesn't work as expected. We can run commandlets remotely by specifying the computer name option and then passing in the host name of the machine. Now, you can actually do multi-machine commandlet operation just by passing in multiple computer names separated by a comma. So I can do computer name hvnugget1 and hvnugget3 to scope both of those boxes. A required parameter is called script block and then in curly braces we put one or more PowerShell commandlets. I'm going to invoke get service and look for any service that contains the string remote. We have to close the block with curly braces and then press enter to go ahead and issue the command. And that comes back and tells us I was interested in remote registry. I can see at a glance that remote registry is stopped on both the local box hvnugget3 and as well as hvnugget1. Of course, if we want to, we can start that service easily enough again using invoke command. For more intensive operations, you might want to create a .ps1 script file and run that script remotely. The way that works, again, is invoke command. You specify the computer name, as usual, and then you use file path to go to the script that you want to run on the remote box. Now, remember that the execution policy for PowerShell scripts is very restrictive out of the box. So you'll need to run the set execution policy commandlet on any target machines in order for those scripts, those remote scripts, to be allowed to run in that way. The final thing I'll do is show you how we can install a role or feature remotely. And you know the drill now with remote command computer name, so you can, I hope, just take off running with this. In our script block, we can do install Windows feature and then the name of the feature. I'll just use Telnet Server. Now, of course, there's the question, how do I know that Telnet Server is not enabled on this box? We could remotely run Get Windows Feature in order to get that list. We see the green or gray, I'm colorblind, I can never tell what color this is, status across the top that lets us know that something's happening, and we're going to want to see a success end code to ensure that this has, in fact, worked. Most excellent, so let me up arrow to get into my buffer, and we'll remotely run get Windows feature, and I'll look for matches on the string telnet. Didn't like that, so sometimes we'll want to use 
our trusty friend the asterisk as a wildcard operator. There we go. So sure enough, the Telnet server feature is installed and the Telnet client is not installed. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.